Welcome to Trail Manners, the podcast so dedicated to mountain trails and running that they broadcast out of a 78 Volkswagen bus in the mountains. Who does that? Eric and Joel are your hosts and will bring you the trail life as you may have not heard it before. You hear about everything from gear reviews, nutrition to keep you upright and moving forward, and they'll even bring guests into the bus for conversations that you won't hear anywhere else. It's time for some running adventures on a higher elevation. The old 78 Volkswagen bus is fired up and headed to the mountains. Here are your hosts for Trail Manners, proudly representing the 801 with their passion and love for the trails, Eric Manning and Joel Hatch. Welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast, episode number 35. Today, we're going to be talking with Debbie Farka and her thoughts on having a coach. So if this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Trail Manners Podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at trailmanners.com. Come back often, and please feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Trail Manners. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get after it. Okay, welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast, episode number 35. We are back again today at gorgeous Mount Ogden Park at the base of Malin's Peak, one of our favorite spots yeah. here in the Ogden area. Uh, you hear about it a lot. As always, got my good friend, Joel Hatch. Joel, how you doing? Doing good. Yeah? yeah. Having, having a good day? Yeah, so far. It's pretty early. It's still, it's, it's might toasty. Might toasty oh, warm out. Yeah, another 98 degree day. Yeah, and, and there's been a lot more, because I got to say it, because of the heat, but there's been a ton more rattlesnake encounters. Yeah, it's all getting, over the place. It's getting ridiculous. Mm-hmm. They're coming down lower. Like somebody found one down here. Yeah, and I had a let's see, it was in our news bulletin for my city, right? Saying that the rattlesnakes are now getting into North Ogden City, into yards and everything else. I'm, I'm glad I live a little bit further, but oh, well, j- just wait, they'll be there. Just enough to piss me off. Yeah. So we're gonna have some problems. So anyway, let's get off that scary subject just again. Be safe. Always, right? always, always be safe. Yeah. And today we've got you can say it an extraordinary <gasps> guest. Even better. Like that? <laughs> yeah, right? I do. Right? Because uh, she was guest zero zero, right? She was guest like negative zero. Right. Because it was a test show. It was a test right? show. It was a test show. So we are super psyched, really happy to talk with good friend, friggin' what do you call it? fangirl of the show for sure. Right? I mean, she's showing me some tattoo ideas with the Trail Manners logo <laughs> and stuff, but she's got to get that approved. Debbie Farka, how are you, Debbie? I'm doing okay. How yeah. are you guys? Yep. Uh, great. Sounds like you might have a little bit of a, a cold. Yeah. A little nasal problem. A little bit. Summertime cold's keeping me down. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the reasons, you know, one of the many, many, many reasons we have you on the show is we've been getting a lot of uh, questions, a lot of comments emails, people talking, because we bring it up quite a bit, yep. um, about coaching. So, you know, Joel, obviously we've talked, uh, you know, we've talked about some of the coaches, you know, Ty, who, you know, his, his athletes are doing really well. Um, you know, Jason Coops and Carl mm-hmm. Meltzer's and, you know, lots Ian of... Charman, Ian Sharman. Ian Torrance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Down, we can't forget. We haven't mentioned the, those guys yet. Yeah. He's, we need to. They, they kill it down there. Yeah. Down is, he with, is he with McMillan? Yep. He yeah. is. Yep. He's with McMillan. Now he's the actual camp host for the summer, I yeah. just saw. So, um, Can you imagine being a camp host all summer uh, for runners? That'd, that'd be, be kind of fun. That would be awesome for runners. Yeah. If it was the general public, I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. I'm, I'm not as much of a people person as I may sound here on the air. <laughs> so, But, yeah, we, we get a lot of questions with people. And, you know, Debbie, as, as you know, we know, you're being coached for the first time this year. First time ever. Um, and... You know, Joel's being coached by the same coach. I am not being coached. Um, although you have a plan. Although I do have a plan. Right. Um, and we keep, keep bringing up Ty for multiple reasons. One, he's just an awesome guy. Yeah. Super awesome guy. Um, he's been on the show, and he's pretty local. <clears throat> you know, not too far away, four right. hours, four and a half hours. And he coaches a lot of people that we know. So, I mean, that's that's why we're here. So, if the, you know, we want to get someone else on the show with a different coach. We tried, but just the timing didn't line up right. Yeah, and we wanted to get this going. So, this show is going to focus a lot on just coaching and how it is from a runner's perspective. Because um, we've had Ty on, talked about how he coaches and different things. But now we want to get, you know, kind of first thing. So, let's just start by how did you start by getting Ty 
as your coach. That's an interesting story, and I'm glad you asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for, compelling questions. <laughs> compelling, compelling. Um, I never, I don't think I ever would have taken that leap to get a coach on my own. I had listened to your podcast about coaches and coaching and listened to Ty, and I knew that he had coaching services and had met um, the amazing Ty Draney up at El Vaquero Loco, one of my favorite races. Um, but just, I don't know, never thought I was good enough. I needed, maybe needed a coach is the wrong term. I don't know if I necessarily, I, I don't know. I just hadn't ever thought, oh yeah, I'm going to get myself a coach and see what I can do. That, um, but after listening to you guys and looking at, um, the website, I thought, well, man, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll do that. And then, um, lo and behold, I get an email in my inbox. I'm shopping. It was around the holiday season. And I'm shopping with my mama, um, looking for some Christmas gifts, and my phone goes off, and I've got an email from Ty Draney. Well, that's odd. <laughs> Open that up while I'm perusing the shelves and read this nice note from Ty that basically said, you have two amazing friends who think the world of you and have gifted you four months of my coaching services. And I don't know if you think this is a good thing or if you think this is the worst present in the world, but giddy up. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm i kind of a sensitive, little tender-hearted person, and I started to cry in the store because that is one of the neatest, most thoughtful gifts I've ever received in my life. Um, I was a little scared and very excited all at the same time. So I immediately texted you two and thanked you for that and got going with Ty. And um, right off the bat, right off the bat, within two weeks, I knew I wanted to extend those four months throughout the whole year to get me through to my um, A race, my goal race, <laughs> which I've never, ever <laughs> thought of racing in that way or running in that way, but um, to my 100 miler this September. Right. So I've got Ty coaching me through September this year. So when did you start with, when did the whole process start? Um, as far as when I started being coached by yeah, them, yeah. January, January, January. Okay. So we're into June. Mm -hmm. So you're quite a bit in now kind of go back a little bit. Cause this is some of the questions. Cause even myself, I have the same question. It's like the uncertainty of getting a coach. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, Oh, I'm not, you know, some of the things you just said, I'm not good enough. I don't know if I want it now. Um, besides being gifted to you or basically sit here, do this now type thing. What were some of the other reasons why you were hesitant? Because I think that's a lot of people out there are hesitant to get a coach because they overthink it, right? Sure. So <laughs> what were some of the concerns you had or the uncertainty you had to get a coach originally? Um, a couple, actually. Um, first, I was coming off of an injury. I was injur I injured my foot at my 100-mile race in September last year, and um, I was, didn't know what running and racing was going to look like for me this year, 2016. Um, that really took a lot out of me mentally, the injury, and I wasn't able to run for about eight weeks and my fitness tanked. And so there was that piece of it. And then as far as racing, I say racing and I, I mean, I was a mid backpack runner. I kind of, that's where I've lived for the past couple of years in ultra running. And I just thought, you know, I don't think I've got the capability to go out and and win races. And I don't even know if that's something I want to do. Do I need a coach if I don't want to go out and, and win a race? You know, what really what benefit would I maybe get out of that? I mean, I run in the mountains because I love it, because it's my sanity. And I just love being in the hills and seeing the places that my two feet can take me. And racing helps that a little bit, going out to these big events and places where I never maybe would have gone on my own or was maybe a little too nervous, don't know the trails. You've got an event, you've got aid stations, you have people out there helping you get to some of these beautiful places. So um, twofold, the injury and, you know, mid-backpack runner, I don't know, do I need a coach? That's sort of where my head always was. So so what's your history with running slash racing, though? I mean, how long have you been doing it? Because that's the other thing is, you know, you're not... You haven't been around for 10 years running and racing. I mean, what's what's your history like for, for that? For ultra running or just running in just general? Let's, let's start with running and then when you got, because I remember when you got into trail running. Yeah. But let's like, you know, maybe say when you started running, what that was like, right? Yeah. Um, and then kind of your, your threshold into breaking into the lovely trail scene. Okay. So running in general, I started running, I don't know, more than 10 years ago, just um, as a quick, efficient way to burn calories. 
Um, I used to be a fitness, a group fitness instructor. <laughs> used to teach spin classes. <laughs> used to teach spin and step aerobics and kickboxing and all of that fun stuff. And um, when you instruct, sometimes you don't get the best workout for yourself. You're there for the other people, helping them get their workout. You know this, Joel. I do. Yeah. Yep. So um, I needed to find a quick way for me to get in my workout and calorie burn. And I hated running. I hated it, but, but it was efficient. And then, so I started making myself do it and, you know, three miles here, four miles there. And, and eventually I started to not hate it so much. And then I started to kind of like it. And then I started to crave it. And mm. then I had a friend who said, Hey, let's sign up for a half marathon. And so I did that for a couple of years, you know, running on the roads, half marathons, did Ragnar a few times. And, um, how to have a very good friend named Brian Clark, who one day says to me, oh, get off the, get off the road, get off the pavement, come, come run a trail with me. And I tell you, my first trail race experience was horrible. <laughs> what was that? Horrible. <laughs> my first, well, I should tell, I should back up and tell you about my first trail run. Okay. My very first trail run, um, was starting loop. <laughs> with Brian and Forrest. That's a good one. I'm pretty sure Misty was there too. So just just start off with a nice little eight mile <laughs> run. And it was great. I loved it. Right. I, I enjoyed the day. I had a good time. And um, second run was Malin's. Oh my goodness. And I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I thought they were trying to kill me. <laughs> anyway, and then my first race was, it was one of the, oh gosh, it was a trail series. It was down at Snowbird. I don't even remember the name of it now. I think it was a seven mile run. And the trails were really rutted out, and my ankles hurt for two weeks. Oh, <laughs> those are bad. And I swore I'd never run a trail race again. And now we see where I am today. So Went right down that rabbit Went hole. Went right down the rabbit hole. But yep. so I started running trails um, a couple of years ago, four, I guess four years ago now. Um, and got in with some peer pressure and bullies <laughs> who, who really um, put on the pressure to do a, to do a trail run, to do an ultra run. And I thought, no, uh, I, they were all signed up. All of you guys, you two included, I think. But we weren't Moab, the bullies. We just were Moab signed up. Moab Red Hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Moab. Yeah, I remember that. Right. Did you guys run Red yeah. Hot? I did. Yeah. I've never. My first year? I was done. there. That's where I first met you and Lane, really. Yeah. 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 So Moab Red Hot um, signed up for the 25, is it 25K? 33K. 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 Signed up for the 33K because I just could not wrap my ra- my brain around an ultra distance run. Keep in mind, my longest race had been a half marathon. Right. Never run a marathon um, until this year. <laughs> marathon distance, <laughs> official right. marathon yep. distance race. Yep. Um, I thought, no, no, no. And then Forrest and Misty, two very good friends of mine who I run with quite often, they said, Deb, you're, you're training with us. You're running the same distances we are. You're doing the same exact training we are. Why not do the 55K? And I hemmed and hawed about that and thought about it. I thought, yeah, yeah what, what the heck? Why not? So I upped to the 55k and that was my first ultra distance race four years ago so it hasn't been very long Mm -hmm. when the big scheme of things yeah and so now you're being coached now i'm being coached so when when you got a hold of ty i know there's that whole screening process he asks information goals where you're at already Mm -hmm. you know that type of thing when you start when you got your schedule right your first was it two week block i don't know how month okay first month block and you looked at it what are the first few words that went through your mind? <laughs> Do I need to censor myself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you bleep it out? <laughs> um, it, it was, oh my gosh, what have I done? What have I gotten myself into? I need translation. <laughs> Some True. of it, I had no idea what it meant. Um, because, you know, speed workouts, there were a couple speed workouts on there with language that I didn't get. <laughs> Um, and some, just the overall, every, pretty much every day, six days of running was different for me. Um, I would run a couple days a week training wise. And, and this had me running almost every day. And so it was, all right, giddy up. Here we go. I think, I think I can do this. I know I can do this, but, um, I immediately emailed Ty back and said, okay, I need some translation on a couple of these what do, what do words mean? <laughs> workouts. Right. What's a fart lick? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what were the difficult adjustments you had to make? Was it time-based since you had six days a week? Was that some of the difficult adjustments or some of the things you maybe weren't used to? Um, I would do a workout of some sort 
not necessarily not necessarily running every day. So putting that kind of time into it wasn't overwhelming or scary to me. Um, and and before he put my first schedule together, we actually talked. You know what what kind of time commitment do you have? How many days of week uh, a week can you commit to running and that sort of thing? So he knew that, and and he's very good about building your schedule around your life and and allowing you to make or me to make adjustments as necessary. So, um, that wasn't overwhelming. It was more, um, just, that's a lot of running, you know, and, and I do yoga and I do strength training and, um, Pilates sometimes. And I thought, okay, am I going to have to give on some of these things or, or no, I'm just going to lose a little bit of sleep sometimes because I've got two workouts a day, two days a week. The days that I do yoga, the days that I do my strength training with Mr the famous Mr. Hatch over here. Um, I'm, I'm getting up and I'm on the treadmill or I'm hitting a trail at, you know, four thirty five o'clock in the morning and that's okay. Cause I'm an early bird anyway. But, um, I think the biggest shock to me was more the, I don't know what some of this stuff means. <laughs> What's a stride? What's a, yeah. yeah. What's yeah. a power run? What's a stride? What's a power run? What's a fart? Like what a mile time trial? What? Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember doing that. <laughs> We had to you do want that me to track. run fast for a mile? <laughs> I think I might die. <laughs> Thanks for this gift. That's yeah. what I like about trail running. It's typically slower. <laughs> so, because I've noticed, like, and I don't know what your guys' schedule or yours in general looks like, but when I got the the Bear 100 training plan, and now my history, again, I've never been structured, coached, mm-hmm. never had a running background, anything like that. But most of my runs, you know, I mean, Joel, get together. Hey, what do you want to do today? Hey, let's do 15. Let's do 12. Let's do 18 miles. Mm-hmm. It, it looks or it appears that some of the coaching is more based on time, right? So maybe it won't say, hey, go out today and do an easy 10, right. you know? Yeah, it's so, like an easy, hour. go do an easy hour. Yeah. yeah, so what does that translate in your mind? Was that something that was harder to get used to? Because, I mean, we we know people like this. We won't name names, and everybody knows someone like this. If they do a run that's 9.8 miles and they get back to the trailhead, <laughs> they run around the parking lot Oh yeah. to get that 10. Yep. So a lot of people are hung up on mileage, but I've noticed, like, with the bear, there is no mileage at the end of the week. It doesn't say this week you're doing 80 miles. It's right. more time here you know strides here whatever here was that was that hard or difficult adjustment for you um not initially um initially because I was still coming off and off of my injury and still working on just building fitness back um I couldn't go out and run you know 30 40 50 miles a week in January I just I didn't have the fitness level and my foot was still getting used to being out on the trails again. And um, I was still working on getting some swelling under control at that point in time. So I was actually really glad that my first month of training was more shorter distance runs, some definitely some speed work strides, adding strides in at the end of the run to work on um, p- getting my turnover back to where it should be. Uh, and, you know, like go out and run. There were, you know, 45 minute run plus strides or 60 minute run plus strides. And then the weekends, I think the first month, I think my longest run was 10 miles, maybe 10 miles. Um, so at first that was okay with me. And I actually really appreciated that. Now, a couple more months down the line, that's been harder for me to wrap my brain around it because, um, and I actually talked about this with Ty very recently. I, um, I, at this point in time for the past two years would have done three, maybe four ultra distance races already um, as training for a bigger event at the end of the year or for fun. And I have so far 2016, I've done one ultra distance race (laughs) and going into that race, Ty was actually there and he asked me, you know, where's your head at? Where's your head at? How are you feeling? What do you want to do? And I said, you know, my head's kind of in a weird spot. I'm, I'm feeling more anxiety going into this race than I think I should. And I said, well, why? And I, I said, well, I haven't, this is my first ultra race since I am tough last year. And that's kind of messing with me. And I don't, I don't know why. I think it's, ju- it's just different. It's new. The training's different. Um, lots of speed work, not necessarily huge focus on miles or huge focus on vertical, um, you know, feet every mu- every week which is something that I had done and it was just kind of winging it you know talking right. to friends you know in the past and he um he said you're going to be fine <laughs> you've done really well this year trust your training go out let the dogs run see what you can do 
ended up having a pretty darn good day. Um, well, and you've had two races this year. You had the three. Temp Trail. Oh, yeah, that's right. You had the Temp Trail Marathon. Mm-hmm. You had the Pocatello 60K. And mm-hmm. what was the other one? Uh, 25K out of Antelope Island. Antelope Island, Buffalo 25K. Run, 25K. And I don't, I don't remember that one as well because me and Jill were kind of in on air most of the day. Right. But I know the other two races, because um, I was there, I saw you, you were extremely happy mm-hmm. with your time. Yep. They were PRs, I mean, I could imagine, or they were close to it for those distances and difficulties. But you seem to have come a long way, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. So when you finished those races, your mindset, what was that like, knowing where you were, say, a year ago at this time, and now where you're at now with all the uncertainty of what you just said? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, um, it's really fun to to finish races feeling as good as I have felt um, this year and to be able to hit what I have felt like have been really aggressive time goals for me. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Um, going into the races with some uncertainty and then coming out of them, <laughs> like thinking, hell yes, <laughs> I just did that. <laughs> and it feels good. And the training is working and it, it is, it's just, it's just a mindset flip where, you know, I've always had a time goal in the back of my head, even, you know, last year, the year before, like, yeah, I think I can do around this time um, and have been fairly successful in hitting goals that I've set for myself, but have never really gone out on race day and said, I'm going to push from start to finish. I've never done that until this year. And I've done that at all three races um, for different reasons. First, Antelope Island, I thought, you know, it's a short distance race. I've been doing a lot of speed work. I just want to go. I'm just going to see what I can do. It's only 16 miles. What's the worst that could happen? And had a, you know, a good day. Finished fairly fast. Felt felt good. Um, temp trail, I uh, had some time constraints. I had an event yeah. I wanted to yeah. get to for yeah, my, we my little guy. <laughs> yeah. Get in the car, Joel. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I had extra motivation to run fast um, or try to run fast for me at that race and shocked myself with where I ended up finishing in the field and w- how I, how well I finished as far as time goes. And then at, uh, at Smut, same thing. I thought, I talked it over with Ty. I wasn't sure because I'd never been on that course before. I'd never done a 60K before. I've done, you know, a bunch of 50Ks. Um, never done a 60K before. Just wasn't real sure what what a doable, feasible time would be for me. And after talking to him, I tossed it out there. I said, you know, what do you think about, what do you think about right around eight hours? And he said, he said, uh, yeah, yeah, that's aggressive. Uh, manage your hydration, but go just the only time I want you to conserve is like the first couple of miles to save a little bit for the big climb going up to Scout Mountain and where it gets really hot. And I said, all right. And um, so I did. I conserved a little bit at the start. And anyway, long story short, finished that race. Fourth female, a um, little bit over eight hours. I think it was 820, but ha- super excited. I well, And smut, the smut race is especially, you know, I speak of the 60 kicks. We do that. That's a tough course with yeah, as much is. climbing. As you do the mm-hmm. heat, yeah, you know, that we weren't used to. Yeah, um, we, me and Joel, have talked about it on the show. We were just wrecked. Yeah, you know? um, <laughs> and I came across, saw you, and you were, you know, I think you'd already went and showered somewhere <laughs> in Boise, <laughs> drove back, <laughs> just to see you finish, <laughs> just to say, okay, we'll see you guys later. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, hope you guys have a good night. Um, but no, I, I, it's a tough course, and so. You know, just seeing the progression, because I've mentioned this to Joel, too, is seeing both of you, you know, Joel at Temp, kind of the same thing. He came across the finish line, excited from what his time Mm -hmm. was, his first year with a coach. Kind of leaves me kind of sad that I don't have a coach. In fact, I texted you both one time, said it's been a great run with you guys, because I probably won't again. (laughs) Oh, whatever. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I mean, the other thing that I want to bring up, because I think this is kind of a big one, too, and I've talked to Joel about this, we've had conversations, is the accountability, Mm -hmm. right? Because in the past, if you don't have a coach, you're kind of just accountable for yourself. If you sleep in or you want to go out for 15, maybe get 10 in, oh, it's okay. But now having a coach, is it harder to be a slacker? Um, Do you feel kind of like, oh, crap, Ty's going to be mad, right? (laughs) Because he's I, a bully. He's such a bully. <laughs> so mean. Um, no. I I don't know. I Yes and no. I mean, the accountability, I feel like, really falls more 
feels it falls on me to be accountable to what he's telling me to do. And I know that I'm the one that has to put the work in to get the results. And I know that he's building these plans for me based on our discussions and my goals. And he's giving that to me. And then it's my job to do it. And he's there to help, you know, cheer for me. He's there to help make adjustments. He's there to guide me along the way. But ultimately it falls on me. And I, and, and he's not going to yell at me if I go out and, you know, skip a 20 mile run or if I don't do my speed work or whatever. I mean, that's, I don't think that's his style first of all, but, um, I think I would, I would beat myself up more if I didn't do it than anybody else is going to. And that, I think that's just my personality. Yeah. Um, but I want it, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I have enjoyed watching the progression go from, you know, it felt like zero. It wasn't zero, but oh. because of my injury, it felt like zero. Yeah. Going from that to where I am now, outperforming what I was able to do in 2014 and 15 so far by leaps and bounds is just, it's amazing. It's interesting. It's, it, you know, you trust in that training and, and his knowledge. Like, I, I feel confident saying I never would have been where I am now as far as the performance and how good I feel running without a coach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I, I wouldn't have been able to put together the plans to get me to where I am now. I would have been doing what I've done the past two years and, and being fairly successful and having some good fun out there on the trails and right. enjoying my races, but I wouldn't be where I am. So, I mean, that brings up an interesting question that it, you hear about people like their dream job, you know, they get their dream job doing a podcast, you know, um, <laughs> and it gets to be work, right? And so it takes the fun out of it mm-hmm. or whatever their job may be, you know, gym owner, you know, whatever, whatever you do. And it's like, oh, you know, once it became a job, it kind of took the fun out of it. Yeah. So and you kind of mentioned it, so I'm going to bring it up, but has, has the the joy a lot of people jump on the trails because it's fun it's kind of at your own thing do your own thing is having a coach and being so structured has that taken any fun out of it or since you've noticed such a difference has it just made it more like you said compelling exciting i mean what's where's the give there um it's i'm glad you asked that question um ty and i were actually texting back and forth yesterday about some goals um trying to figure out i am tough this year and uh, where I want to be and where I want to land with that race. And um, we're going to talk in a couple of weeks to, to line out the, the rest of the summer. And we know uh, that's going to be, me and Jill know that'll be under 29 hours. I'm tough, right? We just discussed <laughs> yeah, that before I'm the show. Yeah, I'm predicting at least like a 25 or 26. Oh, man. <laughs> we'll see. Bookmark and this. The only right reason now. I say that Bookmark is because that. that's what I'm going to run. <laughs> 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 because Debbie doesn't have a pacer at night, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you saying I'm afraid of the dark? Joel? I am saying you're what afraid you, of the what dark. Are you saying? That, well, fear is a great motivator to move quickly. It that's is all I have to say. <laughs> um, so, what we ended our conversation, and he said, "Until we talk, focus on staying healthy, injury-free, and loving the run." Mm-hmm. And I wrote him back, and I said, "I never have a problem loving the run." And some people would be like, whatever, speed work sucks, it's hard, I know that stuff is hard, and you've heard me cry, Joel, yeah. you and Eric, you guys have heard me like whine a little bit about some of the workouts, but honestly, the feeling I get when I finish one of those speed workouts, and I know I have just handed my rear end, rear end to myself, I've worked right. hard, and I know it's going to pay off, and is it hard? Yeah, but there's a part of me that really likes that. I, yeah. I like pushing myself. I think ultra runners are a little bit masochistic that way. Most of us like the pain and coming through the pain. We like seeing what we can do, what we're made of mentally and physically. And that's a big part of it. And for me, it's not so far. It's not turned into work. It's not turned into, Oh, I got to go run today. Or, Oh my gosh, I have to go do another speed workout today. And I mean, there's, there's always days that, um, are rocks when it comes to running and that just, they, they're, drudgery it hurts it's a little bit slower you feel like a sloth a little bit and then there's the diamond days and those are the ones that you you strive for and the training has allowed me to have more diamond days and and even though it's structured I still get to choose where I'm going true he doesn't tell me you are running Malin's today right 
well, you are running Lewis tomorrow. You I know, think that's going to change after this podcast because I've had one of those days where he goes, I want you to go run Malin. So I'm like, shoot. Uh oh. How'd you know about that? Yeah, but, <laughs> see, that's a problem. This tie comes down here. Yeah, he comes does. through here quite a bit. And we've hooked up with on some runs. So now he's starting to know the home turf. For yeah. yeah. To, and for those out there, Malin's um, is one of the. One of the peaks we have here. Um, it's not the tallest peak by any means. No, but it's, exce- it's, it's super accessible it's for it's like urban trails, right? Yeah. It's four miles. It climbs over 2,000 2, feet within two miles. And it's kind of like our town hill, Yeah. right? Yeah. Can you, it's Like Joel says, you can access it from different trailheads. You can be on the Bonneville shoreline, jump up that, come back down, stay on the shoreline. Yeah. You know, you do doubles. We also have a couple other peaks close by and climbs you can tie in. So Maylands is not a an easy grind. It's no. a beautiful trail. It's a great view, but it's it's definitely tough. So mm-hmm. for those of you that don't know, our home course here, Maylands. Right. Yeah. So so far, he hasn't dictated where my runs need to be, unless it's a track workout. He'll say, "Go to the track, do this workout." But other than that, I get to choose where I'm going. You know, for my long runs, I I choose which trail I want to go on and. If it's a hill workout, I choose the hill I go to. And, right. and so that still allows me the freedom and flexibility to, to be out in the areas that speak to me for that moment, that day. Well, has it changed your your training? You know, you talk about running with certain people a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and I know me and Joel, you know, we run together quite a bit. And does it change the amount of opportunities you get? Does it change the runs with people? Since you're more, you know, you're, you're being structured now. So it's not right. like, hey, let's go run, you know. 10 miles or to the gate and back or whatever. Now you're structured. So does that, has that changed much? Do you find yourself running alone more? I have found myself running alone a lot more. Um, and for several reasons, structure with the training plan is a very small, very small piece of it. Um, and that, excuse me, <laughs> that's more because some of my runs are speed workouts and a lot of times people don't I'm not doing. I'm not doing a speed workout. Are you? Oh yeah, nuts? for sure. <laughs> I don't right. want to do that. <laughs> um, so I'll do those. You know, sometimes I do them on the treadmill. Sometimes I do them alone. That's fine. But um, I find myself running alone a lot more. Uh, I'm a better gauge on how I'm feeling, what I'm doing. It's my pace. Mm-hmm. It's how I feel that day, and I don't feel pressure to keep up with or stay with other people. But life is just busy, and that's the biggest reason for me that I've. I've been running um, by myself more. Um, I have two kids who are very, very busy, little sinkers. Um, they keep mama running. And I work full time. And that adds, you know, complexity. And I'm not as flexible with when I can run. Um, I have to go when I have the time. The and some there. Either when there's the window of opportunity. And, and sometimes that's 4.30 in the morning. And there are a few people that want to get up and run at 4.30 in the morning. And sometimes it's in the heat of the damn day right after work. And that's the only time I have to go. And there are people that are afraid of rattlesnakes and they don't want to go that time. (laughs) I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So I I just, I have to do it for me when I have the time. And and a lot of times that means I'm alone and and I'm okay with that. I used to not be okay with that. Right. I used to be really nervous. Um, I used to not have the confidence in my wayfinding ability, um, and that has changed a lot. I think practice being out there on the trails and knowing our home trails really well helps with that too. But um, I last week had the opportunity to run in Salt Lake um, on trails I've never been on. I had a meeting down there up at Solitude, and I thought, I'm here. I am going to run, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick a trail and I'm gonna go. And you know, a year ago, two years ago. I wouldn't have done that. So she coaching for you has been it's life been changing, life right? Changing. It's been for sure run changing, <laughs> life changing a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So, so now I want to throw the, the mic into Joel's hands. Now mm-hmm. he's going to be like the guest, right? Okay. Instead of one of the hosts. So everything you're hearing with Debbie, cause again, you're, you're being coached and kind of right. the same things. What is she, I mean, I, I, I'll, you could probably reiterate a lot of what she's been saying, but what are some of the challenges or changes that you've, seen with yourself i mean you've run a little you know a few more years longer maybe yeah Um, definitely you know and you're more structured in life because you're you know i think he just called you old well before we run we've run a lot of years together already so (laughs) i'm in the same boat those grays on his face i got just as many (laughs) oh she called me old again yeah she likes that (laughs) i know just beating me down every week with that Uh, so i think when i first got my schedule um I looked at it and I was like, 
Well, the speed stuff's going to be hard, but the weekend stuff, when I do the long runs, that's not hard, right? Because at that point, I wanted to start doing longer stuff. So I really had to kind of rein myself in. And I was, it was kind of like a bummer at that point. I was like, well, I want to go out and I want to do like a 15-miler, but my schedule says I'm only going to do 10, right? So that was an adjustment right away. Um, the speed stuff, yeah, that was at first just kind of wrapping my head around that because I'd never done anything structured like that in the past. That was kind of an adjustment, but it was a quick adjustment. After I did the first couple speed workouts, I was like, I kind of like these now. Yeah, I almost look forward to them. Um, Debbie and I have done a couple and together, and you get done with those, and you're like, that was fast. I've done in like 40 minutes. <laughs> now, what like, yeah, now, now what do I do? Yeah, now what do I do? Exactly. <laughs> another hour and a half scheduled yeah, to run today. Exactly. <laughs> you're just like, you're almost bummed at that point, but... They do pay off. I, I really do like them. Um, yeah, as far as like, you get like a week. I'm supposed to do like a 20 mile this weekend. And then you start the scheme and you start planning, okay, where can I get this 20 miler in? You know, because you do want to go do some like adventurous runs. And so you try to combine the two together or maybe you haven't run somewhere yet. And you're like, well, I'll do my 20 miler there because I haven't done it yet. As long as it meets the criteria of like either hill work or easy or whatever, you just kind of patch the two together. Um, and yeah, I'm, I really like it so far. Um, you almost look forward to the schedule coming out at the beginning the of the month. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Debbie talks to Ty a lot more than I do. Um, right now, I'm just two months in. She's six months in. And I'm just kind of building my base still right now. And I just kind of like getting the, the schedule and then being left alone in a way right now. Um, I kind of also feel like I don't want to bug them at this point because I am building my base. Um, I think maybe give me another month and then I can start strategizing a little bit more with him because for me it was, you know, I want to get through this year healthy. And then next year was supposed to be the kind of the, the year to see what I can do as far as like racing goes more than anything else. So this year for you is more like building up your base. So yeah. when next year rolls around, you're kind of hitting on all cylinders and you're kind of getting more aggressive. I think so. That was kind of the our initial discussion with the, the coaching plan. And it, sometimes you got to rein yourself back in on that because, you know, you, I mean, I was joking with Debbie about running fast and I'm tough. And I, I think that she can probably run that 26 no problem but for me that would probably be a stretch right now and i just gotta keep constantly dialing myself back be like no you gotta play a long game don't don't go back to the old mistakes that you made and try to rush things so that, that's the reason i got the coach right he's got to keep me kind of reined in so i think that's really interesting that you like when you filled out your form and you were initially talking with Ty, you had a plan, so to speak, like you want this to be a build year. So that yeah. next year, you know, you know, you want to like go for it. Yeah. What can I really do? And for me, I, I didn't have, I didn't have a plan like that. I didn't um, know really what I wanted to do. And when I felt filled out that questionnaire for Ty, I, I kind of struggled with it. I think I was actually texting you guys. Yeah. I, remember saying, that. I don't yeah. know how to answer some of these questions and right. email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as as I've um, gone throughout this year and felt better about where I am running and got my base built up, now now I've got those goals and right. now I, I'm really like you said talking to Ty more about okay here's where I want to be for this event here's what I'd like to do and I'm just excited about the progress I'm making and so yeah. that's that's been really fun and interesting so and I, I wouldn't stress about not knowing initially really right. where you want to go well i think that with anybody with any coach whether you're gonna use tie or not you, you gotta play a long game right you can't expect to have like these two month plan for yeah a great exactly yeah. yeah you really do need to play that long game think about like a six or a 12 month plan and i know that it can be a kind of a hurt on the wallet but that that's what you're there for right nobody can freaking build rome in three months it's just not possible maybe your three month is a tester to see if you work well with that individual and the if benefits you, yeah if it works exactly for your lifestyle right and then you know don't don't speak negatively of a coach if things don't work out in the first three months because that's really not enough time. You're just starting to build that rapport. You're starting to build your base. you got to give it longer than that, folks, for sure. So with, with him being your coach, I mean, I don't know, we've discussed and kind of hammered on more of the training part of things. 
is it kind of get into or and I don't know if you guys have had experience with this, but I mean we all know Ty and a lot of these coaches have done things for years, amazing stuff as well. Does do you ever get into like a nutrition side of things? Is that part of the plan? No, or, that was or not hydration, anything no. like that, or is it more mileage based? I, not from with me at least. I've talked to Ty about um, nutrition and hydration um, with respect to specific events okay. um, as I'm going into the race. Um, so he, for Temp Trail, it was kind of a no-brainer. It was cold that day. Yeah. It was fairly short distance race. I was just going to go and take a couple gels with me, maybe eat a banana or two at an aid station and just carry on and roll with it. It was going to be a nice, cool, wet rainy day did he, did he tell you to wear a jacket <laughs> no okay <laughs> <laughs> no those decisions were left up to me <laughs> um but for for smut that was very different um leading up to it we were um corresponding back and forth about it and he said i want you to play with your hydra your hydration and your nutrition not play with hydration but stay hydrated play with your nutrition what is your plan what do you want to do and um he said, I think that's, that, that works great. Whatever I came up with, what I told him I was going to do, he didn't have any tweaks to it. But I think if I was going to be making some massive mistake, he would have said, uh, let's dial that back or yeah. let's maybe think about something else. And so he's there to talk about whatever you feel like you need to talk about. What, mm-hmm. You want advice on nutrition? Great. He's, he's there for you. You want advice on the running or something's hurting? I mean, he's always checking in to make sure your body's holding up, to make sure your mind is holding up, at least. At least for me, he is, right. and and um, I appreciate that because he's not just saying, "Okay, go run and tell me how you how your run is," or "I'm gonna, you know, track your progress on your Sunto or on your Strava or whatever." It's um, he really cares about you as a runner and how you're holding up mentally, physically, all of that. Right. So what's I mean for both of you? I mean, this has been quite a bit of a change, but you're both seeing results, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's somebody out there, and I'm not talking Ty, I'm talking coaching in general. Mm-hmm. If there's people out there that are kind of on the fence, what are some of the things that they need to maybe ask themselves to get them one way or another, right? So if someone's thinking, oh, uh, maybe I should get a coach, right? What are what are some of the some advice you would give them on kind of taking that leap? I would say first and foremost, am I ready to commit? the time and the effort and the energy into whatever my coach tells me to do based on the goals that we discuss and set together. You know, am I willing to commit to that? Cause you don't want to, you don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste your coach's time. And it, it's a big commitment, you know, it, the running, you know, most people, ultra runners, they're out there. They want to run because they enjoy being in the hills, but are you willing and ready to commit to doing speed work? Are you willing and ready to commit to checking in with your coach? And, you know, do you want to do the work? And that, I think that's the first question you need to ask and answer for yourself. Yeah, I would definitely second that. You got to be ready to make that commitment. Yeah. And, you know, one thing, too, that I think listeners should understand because we get questions like this is this isn't, we're not just talking. I mean, obviously, we've got Debbie and Joel here. We're not talking just about ultra distances when we're talking about coaching, right? right. These coaches, just because they've got that experience, I mean, for example, again, Ty, he coaches track and cross country. Right. So yeah. he, sh- he coaches shorter distances. Right. So if you're somebody that wants a PR on a 5K, uh, a trail marathon, a half marathon, you know, the, the options are still there. I'm not saying yeah. every coach out there offers that. But there might be more that offer the shorter stuff than necessarily the longer stuff, True. too, right? because there's a few and far between. So when we're coming across with the show and you keep hearing ultra and, you know, 50 miles and all that stuff, make sure you understand this could be for anybody. Even if you're, you know, transitioning, I've had this question, I'm transitioning from road to trail. Should I get a coach? Well, I mean, realistically, that's up to you for right. one, but I would make sure you enjoy the trail yeah. before you get a coach <laughs> exactly. if, you, if you haven't made that jump. And, you know, once you are on the trail, if you want a PR to half marathon and you have the time and the will, go for it, right? I mean, I th- I'm sure, again, we've talked about on the show, interview your coach just as much as they're going to interview you. Oh, yeah, make Joel, sure it's a good fit. Joel says it all the time. Make sure it's a good fit for yep. you. So, yeah, everybody out there, make sure you understand this isn't just ultra running. This is just, obviously, the people we're speaking with come from that mm-hmm. field um, or background, and nobody behind the mic today has a running background. Myself, nope. Debbie, or Joel. So, you know, the, the coaching aspect isn't, 
just for people that have run since high school because right. you get a lot of that as well. Right. I mean, I, I first day I ran with Joel, he had a training plan. He said, yeah, and afterwards we're going to do strides. I'm like, yeah, what the that heck? That was fun, right? <laughs> Like, what's a stride? That, Is that was fun. We go into the coffee shop. Do they have, yeah. like, a stride str- strudel? <laughs> um, so, I mean, there's some there was new stuff to me, and even looking at the bear plan, there was stuff I didn't know, right? I didn't understand what things were, and, you know, that's just part of the curve, right? Right. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, um, races ahead. Right. What do you I mean, what do you got? So you've done three Mm -hmm. and you got your big one in September. That's Mm kind of your goal. I'm going to go, you know, easily sub twenty (laughs) nine. What uh, what do you got before that? Kind of some tune ups or things you want to do? Nothing officially yet. Not registered for anything yet. Um, For sure. Want to run El Vaquero Loco again. Um, As long as I can swing that in my schedule. I think that's a great um, hard 50k leading into a fall hundred mm-hmm. good training run it's ties race um it's a beautiful area um so definitely want to do that july is still somewhat up in the air for me i um have something in the back of my head that i think i might go do but i'm not sure yet so we'll get that off air yeah we'll do we'll do something in july um but, uh, and then again, some of that will be dependent on the conversation that I have with Ty in the next week or so about the next two months and training, what, what training in July needs to look like and what training in August needs to look like so that I can be successful at I Am Tough. Um, I was successful at I Am Tough last year, but just barely. <laughs> <laughs> Success is a moving bar, right? Depending on you know, what I'm I mean, sure. I, I wanted to finish. I mean, the goal is always to finish under cutoff time, right? You want to yeah. finish that race and... And I did that by the skin of my teeth last year. And I want to go and enjoy it um, a little more this year and hopefully, knock on wood, um, not injure myself 20 miles in. So, well, I mean, I mean I'm going to regress a little bit, but that's a perfect point you've brought, both brought up as injuries. And I think when you have this type of structure with a coach that might be building your base or bringing you along, you know, injury to me, aside from a freak rattlesnake bite or, you know, <laughs> something like that, I mean, it seems like it would be less right? Because your body's a little more adapt to these things. Yeah. Am I right? I mean, I I think so. Yeah. I mean, to me, it seems like the more you do things, more structured it is gradually instead of going, oh yeah, yeah, last week I put in 20 miles this week, I'm going for 60. Right. 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 Slow, gradual build so so far. And if you have an injury going into it, um, you know, the coach can work with you on getting you ready. So, I mean, that's another huge, I would think, advantage of coaching was, uh, you know, prevention of injury other yeah. than the freak things. Yeah. I mean, and initially for me, speaking from my experience, I mean, the first month, every week, how's your foot? How, how is, how is the foot holding up? How does it feel? How do you feel? Um, a constant checking in to make sure that that injury, I wasn't re-injuring myself, that I wasn't, um, feeling any other aches and pains from muscle imbalances that I may have, um, gotten while healing and recovering. And, um, he was very conscious of that. And so was I, I mean, I, coming off of that, I knew, okay, I don't knock on wood. I don't ever want (laughs) to do that again. I mean, to be, you know, anybody who loves whatever your sport is to be running, cycling, climbing, whatever, to be injured is just not, it is not fun. And it is mentally hard. Being on the (laughs) sidelines is not fun. Um, so I, I knew I wanted to be very conscious and very careful of how I came back off of that. And he was really good to keep me dialed in and, and keep me pulled back a little bit. Like, no, you're not going out and running 20 miles. As much as my head said, I want to go run 20 miles, you know, I, I, I should be ready to run a 55K in February. <laughs> and, right. and, and come February, I was nowhere near ready to run a 55K. No. There was no way. Well, yeah. not race it. I mean, you could have run it. I could have run it. I would have suffered. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would have suffered. I would have paid for it and been really sore for a while afterwards. But, right. you know, and, and, one of the first questions on the questionnaire was, you know, what's your goal race or goal event or goal whatever for the year? And I knew it was to run a fall 100. And he said, okay, that's going to be our A race. The everything we do this year on your plan is going to be to prepare you for that. Mm-hmm. And and it's it's working so far, and uh, I'm super excited about it. And that's your A race too, right, Joel? So it is September. Yep. I'm tough. I'm tough. Same supposed weekend. to be an A race. Um, the Carol Local is supposed to be an A race too. Okay. I'm supposed to go there, give everything I have. Yeah, we talked about that. And It'd be nice to go there and actually have a good day. Yeah, I think so. I'd li- I'm looking forward to that. What's your goal time? I don't know. I I'd, I'd like to do it in like seven hours. Nice. If I can, we'll see. 
I don't, that might not be fast for some people, but that's fast for me. Just don't eat at that Mexican restaurant the night before. <laughs> <laughs> well, Luke says that is like the key to a uh, PR, yeah, right? Whatever. I'm, I'm not, not doing I'm not that on again. his training plan. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not doing that again. <laughs> yeah. That was a mistake. That was that year. So, looking ahead, okay, hypothetical, what would your thoughts be, say, September rolls around, both of you for that matter, just kill it, that I'm tough. You walk away with smiles considering what you went through. Would you both inter- entertain? I think Joel maybe already have answered this. Would you both entertain having a coach next year? Oh yeah, I'm definitely yeah, gonna stick with it. Yeah, absolutely. No, so you, I'd like. I want to stick with it through twenty. The fall of twenty seventeen is kind of my goal. So would you stay after I'm tough? Kind of keep going? Would you take oh, yeah, a few months? Absolutely, because okay. I think you're gonna take a, maybe two weeks off after, and then to start building again at that point. I, I could see some hard workouts being in winter. Yeah, like strength. Late, or. late uh, November, early December. And because me and Joel, we've had this conversation off air, but it's almost you know doing this. I mean, De- Debbie brought it up. Is Joel's old? Um, <laughs> oh man! So she brought that up. <laughs> but me and Joel have had this discussion. Okay, we're no spring chickens. Um, <laughs> but it's almost like we're kind of getting into that mode of how long we'll be able to do this, this ultra running thing. And me and Joel said, you know what? What am I capable of? Yeah. What's my potential? Yeah. Because we've never, I know I haven't, Joel's talked about it since we haven't been dialed in or faced injuries or whatever. It's like, you want to know, right? Yeah. You've had a bite of that cherry on some races and you're like, mm-hmm. wow, oh, wonder, yeah. what totally. if, what if I right. would have not been along at an aid station? What if I wouldn't have got hurt? What if I had that, you know, two weeks before and not, you know, gone on an ice cream fast or binge? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's always like, <laughs> what is your potential? Right. Right. And so I think we're kind of at a phase. I know I am. I'm, I would love to get a coach um, after the bear <clears throat> for next year, starting in the fall. That would be my goal. Right. Just to see next year, kind of be my year to see what I've got. Is that kind of what you're doing coaching for is to kind of see what your potential is? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Y- for sure. I wanted to um, see what I was capable of this year, to get get my fitness back one, see what I am capable of, and move up. I think I think what I wrote down as my one of my main goals was I want to move from mid back of the pack to front of the mid pack. Right. Is what my goal was for this year. And um yeah, I, I wanna keep going. I Ty, I want to keep going. <laughs> well, and again, I mean, as Debbie mentions, I mean, this isn't just because you want to win races, right? You don't get a coach saying, well, I want to win a race. It could be just improvement right. overall. Right. I want to see what me personally, what I'm capable of. Will I ever win a race? I don't know. I, and that's not nec- that's not what I'm going for anyway. I'm doing it to see what I can do. Yeah. You know, what is my personal best? And you put enough time and effort into this. You don't want to cheat yourself and always, always, always wondering what if. What if. What if I would have done this? So yeah. I think, and, you know, Debbie brought it up right in the show, in ultra races, it's, you don't just run a 100-mile race because you'd run it because you want to see if you can do it, yeah. right? It's not, hey, I'm going to run a 100-mile race because i got nothing better to do. It's mm. more like I want to see if I can do it when you get into it. And then it becomes this thing in your head is, I wonder if I can go faster. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like I will never run that race again, but I wonder if I could go faster, right? I mean, that's the the human mindset. A thirty-two gig iPad. What would a sixty-four gig? Hold? You know <laughs> right. what I mean? So, yeah. So it's human nature. So I, I don't know. I think the listening to you guys makes me want to get a coach, right? And I know I have the plan, but it almost makes me want to pick brains more and and do other things that way. Get one. It doesn't have to be anybody we've talked about. There's plenty of them out there, but just talk to them and interview them. See what, yeah, yeah. see what's beneficial for, and be comfortable with that person, right? Yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's just yeah. be that comfort level. And you know, we we're winding down here. You know, we've got the garbage truck pulling up. Uh, yeah, try not to run into Joel's truck. Yeah, maybe that's not a good place to park. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. And just if you're a big crash, we'll, it's, might it's get fine. you a new truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's smiling now. <laughs> so yeah, it's free. You know, talk to if you have questions. You know, on specific things, or you can hit us up offline as well. Because I know there's a lot of people that have already done that, and we'll answer them the best we can. You know, always coaches generally, as we've talked in the past. We'll give you some some free advice, I guess. If I should get you as a coach or whatever, they're not going to charge you to question them to say, "Hey, should I? Would you coach me?" It's not okay. Yeah. The, you're on the clock. One one eight hundred. It's three minutes. You know, a dollar a minute. Um, so make sure you get into that and and test that a little bit. So, 
Is there anything that you guys would like to add or anything I left off for this little spiel on coaching that maybe someone out there needs to know or we, we didn't touch on? Uh, no, not real. I think the biggest thing is just talk to that potential coach. Make sure you line up well with them because you're going to invest a lot of time and a lot of money into this and you want to make sure that 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 synergy that give and take is there that's probably the most important thing right now and then like debbie said make sure that you're willing to or you have the time to see the plan through and maybe that's a good question for your coach too yeah. like what kind of time am i looking at right i mean what kind of how many days you know debbie went from whatever to six days right um, may not be that way for everybody yeah, if you, you don't know. have the time to do, not a, not every coach is going to say go run six days. Yeah. I I only started out with like four days, and I just recently bumped up to six days. Well, I think too, you know, I want to reiterate that you know that was part of our initial conversations was you know okay, talk to me about your schedule and how much time do you have to commit to running? And so th- I mean that six days that was built around what I said I have time for, right? Yeah. Um, and what I was willing to do. So uh, you know, and it. A coach that you mesh well with will will listen to and understand your time yeah. constraints and your needs. And I think to um, understand or know or think about what you might want or need from your coach. You know, Ty doesn't live here. No, nope. he he lives in Wyoming. We're in Utah, and I'm not going to see him face to face. I'm not. He's not going to be out at the track timing me, yelling right. at me. He's not going to be out there running with me. Um, like a lot of people, I think typically think a coach would do. Right. Um, so, you know, understand your needs and, and be yeah. okay with how that arrangement is going to work. Yep. I think that's great. I think that's some really good advice. Even I learned a little bit from the show, which um, is always a good thing. I enjoy that. Um, but we're going to do something we haven't done in a while. Okay. Um, we're Should gonna, I be scared? Yeah, you better take a drink of water, take a deep breath. <laughs> you know, you got your congested, clear the snot locker, whatever you need to do. <laughs> um, we're going to jump into some lightning round questions. Sweet. All right. So we haven't done this for a while, um, and we're going to get back into it. So we'll, we'll start off with some easy stuff to kind of get your prime, get the get the brain moving around a little bit more than we've already grilled you with. Um, number one, what should everyone have on their iPod? What should everyone have on their iPod? Yeah. What song? What one song? One song? One song everybody should have on their iPod. Oh, man. This, this might... <laughs> I don't know, my brain is going into a couple different directions. Um, everybody needs some angry music yeah. on their iPod. And for me, without fail, Marilyn Manson, Beautiful People, will make me run fast wow. down a hill. <laughs> All right. That's one I haven't heard in a while either. And what's funny is Scott Jaime, one of the first guests on our show, said angry music yeah. helped him too. So, yeah. wow. I better get some I'm angry music. I'm not always an angry music listener, but there are times when you just need to pull that out. Okay. How about your bucket list race or adventure run um, that you still need or want to do? Oh, man. Um don't really have a race that's a bucket list race there's a lot that sound fun um adventure runs i don't know i i want to go back and do the teton cirque again um that was fantastic but i've already done it so um i'd love to get up on the pacific crest trail and explore some of those areas um the wonderland trail sounds amazing oh yeah um, for sure. There's so many. There are so so many. I I want to go back out to Kauai and do some more runs out in Kauai. There's too many. Too so many to so pick a one. Few. So just a few. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just a G- couple. Good thing I have hopefully <laughs> some good years of running left in me, so <laughs> I can do those. Good thing you're not like as old as me and Joel. That's there. right. That's right. The clock is ticking on you two. <laughs> and and you, <laughs> man, this is getting harsh. <laughs> uh, okay, you've got you've got young children. Yes. What is your favorite Disney movie? Favorite Disney movie. Mm. Little Mermaid. Wow. We've had that one before, I think, too, by somebody. I think that was Turtle. Was it Turtle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think he did say that. <laughs> oh, boy. That's a good one. Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram? Or none. <laughs> uh, um, more and more. Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Mm-hmm. Favorite trail running shoe? <laughs> Brooks. Pure Grits. Wow. Love the Brooks. Like, they're minimal, pretty minimal shoe, but I love to feel the trail underneath me. I 
get lots of good grip and know where my foot's going. It's a good one. Good shoe. How about uh, your guilty pleasure food? You're a healthy eater. Running guilty pleasure no, just, food or just just guilty gu- pleasure food? Chocolate. Anything? Chocolate. Dark milk. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Mm-hmm. That's not a fan. I'm not a fan. Favorite race performance and why? <sighs> that's hard. That's that's really really difficult to choose. Um, nothing compares to the feeling you get um, finishing your first ultra distance race, or finishing your first of a distance. You know, first fifty, first whatever, whatever. Um, but I think crossing the finish line at I am tough last year. Last year. I've never cried so much <laughs> on a race, never been in that much pain for that amount of time and, and being so scared that I wasn't going to make a cutoff that motivates you, right? Um, <laughs> That's one word that I, I am really proud of that finish getting that's it out. That's a good one. I yeah. mean, that's a, that's a hellacious course. If you could pick one person to run some trails with and pick their brain or talk to them, who would it be? Anybody in the world, past or present? Um, more and more. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm going to start sounding old. <laughs> she I pointed <laughs> at Joel on that one. <laughs> you need might, a camera so you can really see what I'm doing here, folks. This, this <laughs> might be your only uh, time on the show. <laughs> <laughs> she might get kicked out of the gym here shortly. <laughs> never. Never. Um, I, want, I feel the need to reconnect with um, family and um, maybe want to know more about family members that I don't feel like I got enough time with. So I don't know if my grandma, (laughs) my grandma Price would have said, no way in hell am I running anywhere with you. But if I could drag her back and put some running shoes on her and go spend some hours on a trail, I think it would be my grandma. Nice. That's a good one. That's a really good one. If someone wrote a biography about your life, what would the title be? Oh, man. <laughs> See, they're getting harder. <laughs> they are getting No brain harder. coma. <laughs> they are getting harder. Um, <laughs> can I pass? Mother, mother Farka's Adventures mother. on the Trail. Oh, there you <laughs> go. We'll take that one. It's yeah. better yeah. than a pass. I don't know. Mother Farka runs so she can eat chocolate. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a long, long title. That for is a long mother. title. Maybe that's a subtitle. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I don't have anything else for you. I mean, we, we I think we've covered a lot of things from the coaching aspect. Again, please don't you know, hesitate to reach out if you have questions. Um, it is kind of a big subject. And, you know, our hope is, as well is to have another person on um, that's had another coach just so we can get some different perspective uh, from some different people. But, man, thanks for coming on yeah. mm-hmm. the show. Anytime. And congratulations on already an amazing year. Thanks. Um, it's been really cool to see how well you've done and, and just the overall smile on your face. You know, and I can say the same with Joel. When he finishes, he, you know, he's come a long way, too, this yeah. year in short time with some tutelage. So That's a good word. Word of the day. Tutelage. Tutelage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, well, I'm using Diamond Days. After you said that earlier mm-hmm. today, so that's going to be one of our new little hashtags. Can I tell you the story where that saying yeah, came from? Too. Yeah. So I can't take credit for that um, little saying. I was on the bus to run the Moab half marathon. Uh, I thought you were saying on the way to school. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, not, not on the way to school. <laughs> on the way to she run. She is that young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, to run the Moab half marathon. Uh, it was my first race half marathon after having Evelyn, my baby girl, who's now seven. And, um, I ended up sitting next to this nice gentleman who was in his early seventies. And he looked at me and he said, well, tell me, darling, what, what is your goal for today? How many races have you done? And he just struck up a conversation with me. And I said, you know, I've done a handful of half marathons and I just am going for a finish today. I don't feel like I'm really trained and, um, just had a baby not too long ago. And, and he looked at me and he said, you know, there's one thing I've learned about running and life is that some days are rocks and some days are diamonds and you never know which one you're going to get. And he said, just go out there and enjoy yourself. And hopefully you have a diamond day. And, um, then he went on to tell me about, you know, his running history and he'd run hundreds of races throughout his life. And it's just this career marathoner is really neat, interesting dude. And I wish I could remember his name now, but, um, I, that stuck with me. I, th- some days are rocks, some days are diamonds and it's true about life and running. So, 
Well, Diamond Days sounds a lot better than Rock Days. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't Agreed. have the same flow anyway. Right. So we'll stay away from that. So, yep. again, thanks, everybody. Uh, Debbie, thanks for uh, coming out. And everybody, thanks for listening to the Trail Matters podcast. And here we are. Going to wish everybody out there a Diamond Day, right? That's Hashtag right. Right. Diamond Hashtag. Day. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Trail Manners Podcast. We'd like to thank Debbie Farka for joining us today and talk about what it's like to have a coach uh, for her running adventures. Uh, we'd like to encourage you all to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Trail Manners. You can also swing by our website. We've got some sweet gear there for sale that you can put on your head or put on your bod uh, to represent Trail Manners wherever you're at. You can also reach out on the contact page. Let us know what you want to see, who you want to hear, or even if you would like to be on our show. So until next time, this is Eric Manning and Joel Hatch from beautiful Mount Ogden Park reminding you, you don't get what you wish for, you get what you work for. Now go get it.